Welcome back to Panthers Playbook Emergency Podcast <laughs> episode. Not, actually, not being joined by Chris Lee, being joined by Tim Donnelly, host of The Drive on 99.9 The Fan. Frank Reich fired. Frank Reich fired. Uh, I have the statement here from the Panthers, David Tepper, the owner. Uh, I met with Coach Reich this morning and informed him that he will he will no longer continue as head coach of the Carolina Panthers. I want to thank Frank for, uh, Frank for his dedication, service, wish him well. Effective immediately, special teams coordinator Chris Tabor mm. will serve as our interim head coach. Senior assistant Jim Caldwell will be a special advisor to offensive coordinator Thomas Brown, who will take over play-calling duties. Okay, I actually... Before we get into who's actually taking over the, the coaching duties for the moment, we kind of saw this coming, didn't we? Right? Because we talked about it before the Dallas mm-hmm. game on your show, on the drive, about, okay, they lose to Dallas. Mm-hmm. Okay, that makes sense. Dallas is a way better team. But you can't go on the road to a Tennessee team with Will Levis, who was picked 32 spots after Bryce Young, and you only put up 10 points again? It's it's the full picture. Mm-hmm. You know David Tepper's impatient. 100%. You know that Tennessee is not a juggernaut, so when you lose to them, it's a little embarrassing. Yeah. You, you know that they're using a quarterback who was drafted after Bryce Young, so it's even more embarrassing. The fourth quarterback taken in the draft. <laughs> so not even a first-rounder. Uh, and then on top of that, it, it's I mean, it, it became a black cloud hanging over the, the franchise mm-hmm. where every press conference started with, Job security questions, and and as long as that's happening, it's hard to like build confidence in any of your players, your quarterback, or anybody else. And and Dave, <laughs> like I said, and then I, I, we need to see it again. Uh, say it again. David Tepper's impatient. Oh so, yeah. So this is the second straight season <laughs> where he's fired a coach in season. And and second straight season, Frank Reich's been fired in season. Also a good point. So it's 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 one of those deals where it feels like a full reset is needed. I'll actually say this. I'm surprised Scott Fitter wasn't included in the press conference. Yeah, that's – yeah. I'm surprised the last sentence wasn't, oh, by the way, the GM's also gone. But it, but it probably should have been uh, a full-scale reset, and and then you pick the guys that you think Bryce Young needs to be to be built up rather than whatever they're doing with him this year. So, yeah, right. I'm surprised that Fitter has yet to be let go. I think the moment the clock really started ticking when he took back over play calling from mm-hmm. Thomas Brown because that was a full indication of – all right, this ship is going down. This plane's going down. I'm going to be the one holding the stick at least. And then, well, I, th- I think that's a funny narrative that it took over was, if we're going down, I want to be the one at the wheel. Yeah. Because uh, since he took over, I have, I have the stats here. In the two games, Frank Reich, uh, since he reclaimed the play calling. Ten points each game. Uh, they've scored 20 points. They've allowed 11 sacks, and they've averaged just twenty two and a half or 222 and a half yards per game. And a fourth and six wide receiver screen on a two-minute drill. So it's kind of like, great. You, you you were going down. You grabbed the wheel and steered it down. Yeah. Uh, the the decision. I agree. I don't even know if if that was when the clock started ticking or if that was a decision made because he heard the ticking clock. Mm-hmm. But it 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 definitely wasn't the the fix. You know what I mean? You had tried that, and I thought going back to it was was desperate. And I've never seen a coach coach better desperate than they did confident. And Frank Wright got progressively more desperate as this season went along, and I think in the end that ended up sealing his fate. All right, so Tabor is going to be the interim head coach, the special teams coordinator, which is perfectly fine because, you know what, let Thomas Brown focus on being a play mm-hmm. caller. Let Evero focus on being a defensive play caller. Let those guys focus on their jobs. And that way they don't have to, the burden of, wait, like, for example, Thomas Brown, I have to be, take back over play calling duties and be the head coach at the same time. I think that's actually good not only for the team now but for their futures going forward. Well, was Steve Wilkes, was Steve Wilkes not available? Couldn't, <laughs> couldn't, couldn't bring him in? Well, I should have kept him, but that's a different conversation. <laughs> um, I, I, th- I think it's interesting not giving it to Evero, um, mm. also um, as an audition, um, okay. and and I, I think kind of what they're going to try to do is hide him a bit, which gives whoever the next head coach is the option to keep Evero because the defense has not been the problem. The, mm. de- the defense, I actually think he's done some good things on that side of the ball, especially with all the injuries that they've had, all the injuries, the emergence of Frankie Louvu. Like you have to, that, that's a diamond in the rough find, and and he was playing well last year, but obviously taking it up this year. Uh, so I think they want to give him the option, whoever the next guy is. Hey, if you want to keep Evero, that side of the ball we're okay with. The problem was our head coach was an offensive guy, and the offense was the problem. So uh, we had to address that. I agree not giving it to Thomas Brown is fine. Mm-hmm. Uh, I want to see Thomas Brown as a play caller for a full year. Yeah, or not, not a full year, for the rest of the year, I guess I yeah, should say. Yeah, I get what um, you're saying. And, and Jim Caldwell being an advisor I think is a good move. Mm-hmm. I, I think there's there were too many cooks in the offensive kitchen. And Frank Reich was the head chef. So so getting him out of there allows some of these other guys to have their voice a bit louder. And we'll see what Thomas Brown can do as an offensive coordinator where he can maybe he can implement some of his stuff. Because let's be real, that was Frank Reich's offense. But let's see what Thomas Brown can do. I know it's going to be, all right, you got 
a week to prepare for a game. Mm-hmm. You're not going to install a whole new stuff, but the philosophy, different ideas, different stuff going on. The, uh, I talked with Mike Lennon about this, uh, NC State quarterback, longtime uh, NFL quarterback, and I think he said he was in the league for like nine full seasons, and he had some like eight coordinators. Eight coordinators yeah, and and in season, if the head coach is still there, changing play callers, he's like, that's not even. That's you know, in the scheme of things, that's nothing because the the terminology is the same. You're calling from the same playbook. Everybody that was inputting into the play or the the game plan was still inputting to the to the game plan. But he said once once firings happen, right? Coaches are, are gone, coordinators are gone mid season. There are more substantial changes because now you have a different recipe of of guys going into the game plan, and and that's what Bryce Young's going to deal with now. Even if it's just adding different wrinkles. Wrinkles are are kind of a big deal, right? Wrinkles are your shot plays. Wrinkles are your third down plays. Wrinkles mm-hmm. are your your uh you know more surprising counters and and things like that. So we get to see again. I keep bringing up Bryce Young's name just because this whole season's about him. We get to see Bryce Young with with a different uh recipe here, yeah. Which which I think is important. I think if he plays, I mean, I'm not even asking for like 10 percent better. From from down the stretch, you have your scapegoat, right? You blame yeah. You blame Frank Reich. It boosts Bryce's confidence, right? Did you see how much you improved once we got the offense settled and going in the right direction? And it could completely change the the vibe of the offseason. But the big if is you have to play better down the stretch. It, it can't keep being uh, you know, business as usual as it's been this year. All right, looking past beyond this year, we'll, we'll wrap up on this. Beyond this season, you still don't have a first-round pick. Mm-hmm. You don't have a lot of draft capital. And you're a search for a head coach again. This again, like yeah. this. I'm sorry, like the, <laughs> like the the rebuild for this team is going to take a long, long time. I go back to a, a um, an insider report from Jonathan Jones of CBS mm-hmm. last week that said sharks were circling this job. Yeah, I wonder if Frank or uh, David Tepper didn't almost read that and go. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Right? Like, you know, you don't realize how much your house is worth until someone comes up and says, I'll give you X amount of dollars for it. And you're like, well, oh, maybe I will sell. Right? Yeah. Maybe, no. I, maybe I will look for, a, you know, a place closer to the beach or whatever it is. Mm-hmm. Uh, if there are sharks circling, the, the appeal is Bryce Young. If you're looking at this team and saying Frank Reich mishandled the number one overall pick, Heisman Trophy winning, Alabama super efficient quarterback, and he was holding him back, if I show up and and put my secret sauce on there and he plays much better, suddenly I'm I'm one of the hottest names in coaching. Yeah. Right? I'm I'm a quarterback guru, which you know the the McVeighs and Shanahan's and Andy Reeds will show you. That's a lucrative uh, title to to have a, given to you, quarterback guru. So so I think the appeal is if you think Bryce Young has been held back, you come in, you unleash him next season. Oh look at this! Now all of a sudden everybody likes you, and they I mean they don't have their first round pick. It's likely going to be a high second, and they have a bunch of uh, cap. So there are things you can do, but you have to have a lot of confidence in yourself to just fix what is there. Because it's it's. Let me let me be clear on this one. They're a mess right now. Oh like, oh, absolutely. Top a mess. to bottom, you, you're you're taking a, over a fixer upper if you take this job. Oh yeah, it's it's Chip and Joanna Gaines style. And you might have Dan Snyder 2.0 as an owner with with, uh, with Tepper. <laughs> that's that's seriously what it's feeling Ooh. right right now. All right, this has been an emergency episode of Panthers Playbook. Make sh- make sure you subscribe here on 99.9 The Fans YouTube page. Also, wherever you follow your podcast, make sure you follow it as well. Also, WRELSportsFan.com. Head there for the latest updates involving the Carolina Panthers.